press go today. I have never done that before, I don't think. Uh, let me see. The little live button's on. Tag friends, share to group. I think you're probably good. Is it counting? Uh, In the upper corner. I just see I think it says live, but I don't see anybody. I think you're good. I don't see anything that says it's counting. Uh, tune efforts watching. So we're good. <laughs> so we're back. The shirt's back. Keaton's in the kitchen. Um, I do have new shorts. Got these for Father's Day. They're blue. Sarah got me these exclusively to wear on this show. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I kind of go with the shirt. <laughs> um, so this is the start of probably at least a couple of weeks of us doing fresh garden things. Everything is starting to come on. The cherry tomatoes, the fruit flies, the yellow <laughs> squash, the zucchini. I, I have been in a running battle with fruit flies. Yeah, they've been bad. Oh, they're everywhere. Well, not only really are just... there fruit flies, but they're like huge uh, yeah, fruit they're, flies. Yeah, they're just coming at me left and right. So anyway. But I know that every year we run into the same thing you do. You end up, oh, I, know, I should plant more zucchini plants because they'll die. And they don't die. And then you have 11,000 zucchini. Yeah, we've got so many coming on. You can fry them. They're good. But sooner or later, you, you run out of frying them. So we're going to show you some ideas. Hopefully, this will help with the bonanza that you have. If you don't have a garden, go to a farmer's market. Right. I know they're going right now. They're even going around here, even COVID, post-COVID, quarantine, stimulus. They're still going. <laughs> so you can, Yeah, evidently. So you can go and you can buy your tomatoes. You can buy your yellow squash, your zucchini. Um, we even talked about, too, possibly at some point in time, look how beautiful this is. This is Sarah's canned beets. She cans the world's greatest pickled beets. So if you're a beet fan, I, sometimes I hold this up and you can't see it. You ever no, notice that? Yeah, you probably can't see that. Um, so we might even do a, a show on this in the future. If anybody's interested in seeing how Sarah makes those beets, uh, post on there. And that might be something we were doing. We were just talking about it because they're delish. They are really good. So anyway, you run out of ideas on these things. You can grow them, you can fry them. Oh, I'm out of ideas. Here's going to be a couple things, hopefully, to help you get through this gardening season, not have to give them all to the neighbor or take them to work or set them on the corner and hope some kid picks them up on his <laughs> paper wrap. Um, so now I'm going to turn this over. So it's going to start with this white fish. This works with any fish. Yeah, any So if fish. you have tilapia, Believe catfish, it or not, like the first right. time I ever made this recipe was with tilapia and I'm, I'm not gonna rip on tilapia but i mean people do that enough you don't need to yeah so you know it's not the, the the prime fish by any stretch of the imagination but um it was delicious with 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 the tilapia so i mean if you're going from there yeah it's all up bass there. crappie catfish right anything other than your dark flesh fish like salmon and uh, trout uh pretty much any of those would work so we'll okay, go ahead. about to drop some liquid. Oh yeah, good point. All right, we'll just drain that off. So tonight we're using actually striped bass from Lake Cumberland. Believe it or not, we're still eating this. I know but, that was good fish and that was fun fish. Well, I was digging through the deep freeze looking for fish because we always have fish either from our our big our big lake or beyond. I couldn't believe I found striped bass. I'm excited. Bass. I'm so, that's pretty awesome. Ten we only have four fillets tonight because it's just Sean and I. <laughs> we've got Gabe in Missouri, and we've got Eden at Governor Scholar at Center College, and Clay's, of course, at his in house. Lowell, so. so in Lowell. So um, this is my trick about whitefish. So I have got um, some distilled white vinegar, and I read this years ago in a, in a in a cooking magazine or something, but. It talks about dipping your white fish in a white vinegar bath. You're not going to soak it. You're just going to dip it. But what it does is it starts to break down the protein in the fish. And what you end up with, with is just this extremely tender, flaky fish, especially if you're going with frozen fish, which ours has been deep freeze, what? year and a half. No, yeah. Yeah, it was a year ago. It was a year ago. We just saw the memory. Saw the memory. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not so. sucking this gun in either. This is just real. <laughs> so this we're going to simply it. take our fillets. <laughs> I'm carrying on. <laughs> and I'm just going to kind of give this a good bath in the vinegar. I don't know if anybody can see that or not. So Side view. Side view. I don't know. You want to see if they can see this? I don't know if they can see it. 
Yeah, this sad view. Um, yeah, I think so. I'm going to bring it over here anyway, though. All right, so white distilled vinegar. We're just going to put it in the bath, give it a good toss. We're not soaking it. We're just kind of coating it real good. So I have just enough fish and tomatoes and things for Sean and I tonight because we are... I can't say flying solo. We're flying. No, and you can't say batch in it because we're married. <laughs> so we're flying duo tonight, which doesn't happen all that often. So that's all there is to it. But I do. I mean, like this is an extra step, and I don't like extra steps unless I think they make a decent difference. And I do, honestly, I've been doing this for years, and I do honestly think, especially if you're baking fish, it makes a huge difference. So then I'm going to go ahead and go through and just kind of pack this dry. Because you're not really looking for like a vinegar flavor. This is just simply to break the proteins down in the fish. So I'm kind of flipping and patting as I go. And the reason why I'm going to pat is because I'm going to turn around and put breadcrumbs on this guy. All right, so you can kind of see that this fish has gotten whiter. I don't know if we showed a real close up beforehand. But if you really look at it, you can kind of tell that the vinegar is doing something. <laughs> kind of going ahead and cooking it a little bit, almost like ceviche or bit, something. Yeah. like a ceviche. We'll just dry that out. Now, a couple things I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm going to uh, turn my oven to 400. Questioning my gardening abilities at the moment. But uh, we had we had a huge catastrophe, tomato wise, earlier this We had year. beautiful plants. We had beautiful plants. And, and that last, yep, yeah, and that last big freeze. And the last big freeze that we had, which if you're not from Kentucky, you won't know what we're talking about, but we had a hard freeze kind of late in the season. Like in May. And I had them underneath a, a um, what do you call that, like a row cover? Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, somehow in the middle of the night, there was, it was a freeze with the wind. If you remember, mm -hmm. we were yep. trying to cover all the plants, and the wind was blowing everything. At some point in the night, there had been a gust of wind, and it somehow, <laughs> anyway, the row cover blew open, and when we came out the next morning, we had what? None. They were dead. 10, 15. Dead, Big, beautiful tomato. We would have had a lot of fresh tomatoes by now. Tomato plants. Yeah. So anyway, we are, these are store-bought, but we do have cherry tomatoes that are getting ready to uh -huh. turn, and they're going to be coming on, and I know from a lot of people that are growing tomatoes and didn't have a catastrophe like we had, that they've got cherry tomatoes coming on. So this is one of my favorite recipes to do with garden tomatoes. Um, we'll get there in a minute. All right, so pasta's in. Fish has been dipped in the vinegar. I'm going to take some breadcrumbs. Once again, I'm gluten free, but normal breadcrumbs. We're just gonna simply, oops, I'm getting ahead of myself again. Take a lemon. So this is your second acid. You're like, wow, this is, this is a lot of acid. You're just gonna simply kind of drizzle this across. You're not necessarily wanting a ton of lemon flavor, just, just a hint. Okay, you're gonna come across with your breadcrumbs. Just making a nice little coating there. So you're not rolling, it's not like you're making a complete nope. breading on like what you would typically do on fish. You're right. just putting a nice little coating of breadcrumbs nice on. Little coating on there. take a little bit of olive oil. I'm just going to kind of drizzle it lightly. Just about like that. And I just kind of go in and pat it, make it stick a little better. Okay. We're going to flip those bad boys. Side. 
Now, I'm not really going to salt or pepper. You could if you wanted to. But I will say that the sauce that I'm going to make to go over the top of this fish is a pretty strong sauce. It's one of those that kind of a little bit will go a long way. So I have found in the past that if I salt and pepper this fish, it kind of gets a little too, too much. And we're just going to drizzle over the top again. that I'm making tonight. At this point in time, I'm finished with my fish. I'm going to move on and I'll come back to it and shove it in the oven here in a minute. Kind of let that sit and let all the flavors marinate a little bit. Let that vinegar continue to kind of break things down. The lemon juice break things down as well. Next, I'm going to do my cherry tomatoes. So I'm just going to take it and put it in a baking dish. My cherry tomatoes down in there. That's about what, 15, maybe 20? Yeah. 10, 12, 11. So we're roasting. Something. Yeah, we're roasting these. And when my kids were little, this was one of their favorite things to eat. They would get a hold of these cherry tomatoes and they would pop them in their mouth. And they loved that they burst in their mouth. They used to get such a kick out of that. It's like one of my favorite memories, really. Of them being little. Now, you don't want to serve them to little bitty guys because they will, if they come right out of the oven, they're going to be hot. And I'm just going to take this and kind of toss them around real good because you're going to be roasting these bad boys. And you just roast them to the point that they start, their skin starts to shrivel. <laughs> There's always a lot of funny stuff that comes up on these. First of all, oh, wow, great, that old fart he's watching. Nice to have him in. And Gwen Abbott just said there's 13 tomatoes. Oh. <laughs> Thank, you, Thank you, Gwen. That's awesome. How about now? How about now? <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah. This show we actually cook, so you just never know. That, that's awesome. <laughs> okay, so. So you took your striper, and you all you did was put it in vinegar. You put a little bit of uh, lemon juice, breadcrumbs, and olive oil over it. And then you've got your tomatoes? And I did the tomatoes with olive oil, salt, and pepper. Okay. I've got my oven at 400, and I've got pasta cooking on the stove. So that's where we're at right okay. now. Okay, caught everybody up. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make the sauce. And I'm going to use my ninja tonight, or you can use um, a food processor doesn't make a ton of sauce, so I kind of like to use the Ninja, but um, it's some basic ingredients here. We've got Dijon mustard, lemon juice. This is fresh thyme from the garden, but you can also use dried just fine. Butter, olive oil, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the Dijon, and I don't know if this frustrates people or not, but I'm not much of a measurer. I'm going to give it two good squeezes, so roughly... Tablespoon and a half. Yeah, something like that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and squeeze this lemon. I'm looking for roughly about two tablespoons of lemon. So I'm kind of squeezing in there, and then I've got my hand here straining the seeds. That's how I do it. Mm-hmm. I like it. <laughs> Good for the nails, the cuticles. <laughs> yeah, good for the hands, especially if you've been handling fish. Uh-huh, right. Okay, that's about all I'm going to get on that one, so I'll move on. I'm going to set this down and tilt it. That way I'm not holding it and maybe it's shaking around. Wow, look at that. Modern technology. Yeah, right? <laughs> me. I like lemon, but I don't like when lemon overpowers things. So a lot of times I'll kind of cut myself a little short from even what like say a recipe calls for. All right. We're just going to take the two tablespoons of butter. We're going to put that sucker down in there and let, let 
the Ninja do its magic. If you've never used fresh thyme, it's one of my favorite herbs to use because it's literally the easiest to get it wherever you need it to be. You just kind of grab a hold of one end and break down the stem. And boy, this stuff smells delicious. That is a good herb. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to be too crazy about this for the simple fact that your food processor or your ninja is going to do a lot of the work. Now, say you don't have a ninja and I don't have a food processor, what am I supposed to do? Well, I would do what I'm doing with this time onto a cutting board and then I would give it a rough chop, try to make it a little bit thinner than what it is. Then I would take my butter, instead of just throwing it in there and letting the mixer do the job, I would probably melt it. You don't really wanna cook it, you just wanna melt it. So like maybe 20 seconds in the microwave. And then I would take and put it in a bowl with a whisk and I would whisk all of these ingredients together by hand. And I've done it that way before. So I don't, how much time do you think this is, honey? You're, you're yeah, it was about time. six or seven sprigs, so all told maybe a teaspoon okay. of fresh thyme. You could so use what, dried too if you had Yeah, and, it, and it, uh, dried, probably like half a teaspoon, something mm -hmm. like that. Yep. All right, so then I'm gonna add about three tablespoons of olive oil. And if you're measuring, God love you. I just don't have the patience for it. Mm-hmm, me neither. Pour it in there. When it's right, it's right. Yeah, and you can always tweak it, that's the thing. Uh, it's probably about a teaspoon of salt, so I'll, that's where a lot of your salt's coming from. And I'm going to do some pepper. And this is a raw sauce, meaning once I blend this, that's all there is to it. We're not cooking it. We're not refrigerating it. It is what it is. I was looking for my tub. All right, Ninja. Top screws on. Make sure it's on tight. You good? Yep. So you want to always start with a pulse. Hello. Why isn't my ninja working? We've got a really good view of the bright lime green coffee mug too. I got that because green's your favorite. Yes. Deck on tasty. So I'll just give it a little squirt. Dunner than done. Eh. Dunny. Go ahead and drain that off. I, you know what I was thinking? What? I was thinking we were using feta cheese. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. It's all good. It'll be fine. We've been on a pasta kick around here. Yeah, we I should have, have pasta down pat right now as much yeah. as we've eaten it. Yeah, and, I'm dra and I am doing this for the simple fact that this is gluten-free pasta. 
I'm stopping the cooking process by rinsing it with cold water. If I were cooking normal pasta, I would not be doing this. Not necessary. But the uh, gluten-free pasta just breaks down pretty quick. turn this over to Sean and then I will kind of throw all of my stuff in together at the last minute. I'm gonna you think I should wait to put this in? I need to I'd go ahead and put it in. Would you? Yep. Okay. That way everything comes together nice and quick. You um, may have to come over and make sure you can see the top of my head. Okay so I'm putting my tomatoes in and I'm putting my fish in to a 400 degree oven. Alright let's move Okay, so uh, for the zucchini fritters, you can do this with you. I'm going to do this with a, a combination of yellow squash and zucchini. You didn't use any garlic. I'm going to put it in my pasta at the very end. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so when you're doing this, you can actually do this with yellow squash or zucchini. Um, I'm going to do a little mix of both. If you're using a food processor, you don't have to spend a whole lot of time on this cutting. What I'm going to do is just cut these into some blocks. This one's going to get cut into about eight pieces. Cut it lengthwise and then cut those into just sections. Those are just half moons uh, if you keep up with like cooking terminology. Um, toss them in the food processor. Now these are from our garden. These are all fresh from the garden. And we have so many to come. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So it's good to figure out different ways to use these because this is a yearly thing. This is not a one-time thing. Having too many yellow squash and zucchini is literally a yearly thing. Mm -hmm. It's an ongoing problem this summer. So all I did was cut these in half, then cut them lengthwise and cut them one more time. So you end up with these blocks, half moons, just drop those in the food processor. Now, if, like Sarah was talking about earlier, if you don't have a food processor, you can do this with a grater. Um, you can just take these on a grater box and just grate them out. Now you might be eating zucchini fritters at like 8 tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. If you're going to sit there and grate away, you might be grating until we'll the cows We'll check home. you later. But <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. But it's doable. But anyway, I've got an onion here. <laughs> I never seem to be able to peel an onion whenever I'm taking one of what it is. Um, it's got a little mode on it. No. Get rid of that. Yeah, I better get rid of that. We probably don't want that in our zucchini fritter. Nope. Let me wash this off. And you could use the ninja. If you have a ninja, you can use it for this step as well. I don't think it really matters how you get them chopped up. I'm going to have to start peeling the onion like before we start. You think so? Yeah, because my onion peel is not very good. <laughs> so all I'm going to do is cut that into quarters. I'm going to drop that in there. Um, now, I have the garlic, and there's, there's two different fields of thought on this. There's probably 5,000 fields of thought on this. I have two different fields of thought on this. One is you can put your garlic in the food processor with your other stuff. I, I don't like doing that because of all the things, garlic tends to not chop up very well. You'll end up with this being mush. And this garlic not being done. So I'm going to grate that. We need to grate it out there for me. So basically what I've got in, in the food processor is... You want yep, the hand grate? The, the little duster hand? Right no, no, the silver. Yeah. No. There. There you go. A That's mincer. A grater. A grater a mincer. <laughs> so anyway, when you put this in here... Now this might mess up the camera when I do this, but... Um, here's the thing. You don't want to turn this into mush. And it will. If I just turn this on there, it's going to eventually turn into mush. So give it a little bit. Go in here with something like this. And kind of just move these pieces around a little. There's, no, there's not any real liquid in here, so it's not going to want to move these big pieces down if you don't take a little time here and there and kind of smash that up a little bit. So, let me get this put back together, right? Kind of rock it around a little. This is why garlic and 
have to do well in this. Because it'll end up with these chunks of garlic that overpower the flavor and everything. So I'm just going to just chop these up. And I so honestly, sometimes I'll just take the that big piece out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if it's being stubborn, at. it's like okay, you have yeah, you got to go. <laughs> so again, you don't want this down the mush. You don't want this basically turn it into a liquid. Which if you just keep if you keep food processor, and sooner or later you'll turn this into mush. That was probably what thirty seconds. Eh, 30 seconds, seconds to a minute. Like um, so, I'm going to take a bowl. I'm going to take off my... Will you get me that, uh, that burner thing? Yep. Now, when you do this and you find this just big piece like that, that didn't really get ground up, just set those out. It's I'll just got to go. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You're going to have more zucchini, trust me. I've been raising zucchini for 30 years. You're going to have it. You can leave it in there too. I mean, there's nothing to stop it from just leaving it in there if you want. So, scoop all this out into your big bowl. All that is zucchini, yellow squash, and onion. Now, any of the pieces that you want to take out, now's the time to do it. There's some I'm going to leave. Heck with it. Now, I got the garlic mincer, not the grater. I'm going to go ahead and grate. Huh, I'm not going to grate it. Turn that on, let me see. Alon just said, my mom, she just said it's a garlic press, Sean. Oh, the garlic press, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> so you want to press this garlic, you don't want to, um, you don't want to put it in your food processor if you don't have to, because again, just like there's those big pieces of, of yellow squash and zucchini, there's gonna be big pieces of garlic. So match that out. You know what I'm gonna try? This is gonna be crazy. This has never been tried before in the history of the world. Uh oh, watch out. I'm gonna try a piece of yellow squash in this thing. Yeah, let's see how that goes. I'm gonna try and mince it like this. Oh, it works! <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you could just cut every one in like a half inch by half inch piece and mince it. You'd be a there in wow. too. Wow! That's you know. awesome! <laughs> Woo! Okay, so. What do we do? Yeah. To this, I'm going to add some Parmesan cheese. I need that, that shredded cheese. That Monterey Jack. Okay. I said cheddar. We don't have cheddar. Small town operation here. We've got Monterey Jack. I put in, that's probably a quarter of a cup of Parmesan. Uh, half a teaspoon of smoked paprika. This is cayenne. If you don't like a little spice to it, don't use the cayenne. Half a teaspoon. Drop that in there, cutie. How much do you need? Ah, put it in there. Okay, ho. <laughs> now, now, crack your eggs in here. And now, we're getting to the key of making really good fritters. That's just a fun word to say. People should make more because it's fun to say fritter. Um, you can put the eggshells in there if you want, like I just did. Or you can take them out. Um, so, now you just need your breadcrumbs. What did we do with those? What did we do with them? Oh, here they are. We got bread crumbs, see? That's how way this operation works. Now a minute ago I was talking about the rookie to this. You don't want these too wet, and you don't want them too dry. So I'm gonna go in here just with my hands. You can do this with gloves on. You can do this with, I don't know, you could probably do it a different way. Um, so what I'm talking about here is, you don't want this too wet because these won't hold together in your skillet. And when you do this, you're just going to end up with a big old mass in there. So what I've got right now, can you bring that camera over here? Mm -hmm. This is going to be a little too wet, I think. So I'm going to add a little more breadcrumb to this in just a minute. But I'll show them what we've got. Basically, you see what this, this is almost to me like what cornbread batter would be. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit thicker than that. So I am going to somehow wash my hands off here real quick and add a little more breadcrumb because I want it a little bit thicker than that so that these hold together in that skillet. So I'll put in another quarter of a cup. 
then I'm going to come back here with a little salt. Half teaspoon, three quarters of a teaspoon, something like that. I got some pepper, half a teaspoon, give or take. That on later. Okay. So I'm going to incorporate all this in. Now, we've got our oil over here. It's already getting hot. It's probably already hot. I had to guess. What I want to do is to make these fritters almost like you're making a hamburger. Don't make these too thick. If you do, they're not going to cook in the middle. So, you know, we always say, oh, I want that fat hamburger. That's fine for hamburgers, but on these fritters, not too fat. These are about half inch, maybe. Matter of fact, I'm going to knock that one down a little bit because that's a little too thick. They will hold together a little bit better once they start cooking. So, if you think, eh, that's a little bit thin right now. Just give it a little time. Now, the other thing you can do, I'll show you another trick. The other thing you can do, if you don't want to use your hands, is get you a spoon. This is a big, this is about the right amount too. So when you put it in your skillet, kind of flatten them down a little. And you don't want to overcrowd your skillet because it's too hard to flip them if you do. Put these in there like so. Kind of flatten them out there a little bit. I think you're out of space. I'm out of space, honey. So that's going to take just about three, four minutes aside. Now, here's the real key to flipping these. When they get ready, which these are not yet, when they get ready, you're better off using two instruments to flip these. You're going to need to hold it with one instrument while you're sliding the other one through it, and then you need to flip it. Where these break apart and it gives people fits is when, or I'm trying to just do it with one or what have you. So while those are cooking, you always get a little bit more with this show. That's what this show's all about. This is show this show's for the people, by the people. <laughs> so we are gonna do something here real quick. Now this is not in the instructions. If you don't have the stuff, if you do have the stuff, go ahead and make this up. We're gonna make the ultimate dipping sauce for these sprayers. And I'll show you what this is. This also makes a great chip dip. It's also great on sandwiches. So I've got there about a quarter of a cup of sour cream. I've got prepared horseradish. So I'm going to use... Can you rinse that for me? We're going to use about a half a teaspoon three quarters of a teaspoon of prepared horseradish. Kind of smash that down a bit. You don't want too much of it, dude. That's about a teaspoon, but we like it kind of spicy. Here's that. I got a little smoked paprika that we just used. So I'll hit it with that, just a dash or two. A little of this cayenne. Do you have a lemon slice? Just so I'm just gonna get some off. If you have a little bit of a lemon, add this in here. If you don't, don't worry about the lemon. This is all pretty common stuff that's usually around the house. Horseradish, sour cream. Now about a big teaspoon, teaspoon and a half of mayo. And we are gonna have made the best zucchini fritter dipping sauce around, which is horseradish, smoked paprika, a little bit of lemon juice, sour cream, and mayo. Um, sometimes you see this, you see this a lot with fried green tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Maybe a lot of places you kind of see that little horseradish sauce. That's what we did right there. This might need a little bit of black pepper. Just to kind of finish it off. It's smelling good in here. Oh yeah, it smells real good. About a half a teaspoon of black pepper. And now you've got the ultimate dipping sauce. I don't even have to try this because I can tell you this is really good. So. I didn't have to try it, but I was <laughs> That's really good. It needs a little bit of salt. Just a little. Saying I don't over salt stuff. So. We're rolling right along there. Oh, yeah. Double dipping this spoon. It's just you and I, and we've already kissed today. <laughs> mm. Now, that's good. That right there is really good. Okay, now. Come bring it down here. We're going to show the next tip on these. 
When you start seeing, can you see down here? When you start seeing the bubbles come through the middle of them, yeah, you can tell that it's really cooking through. Um, the other way that you can kind of do this too is if they slide off the bottom and they'll move around. Now see, that one's nowhere near being done yet. This one's a little closer. And all these little floaty pieces, there's no real stopping that. Um, they're always going to be there. What you'll find is that these things will release from this skillet more when they get close to being done on that one side. The whole key is here, don't flip these a bunch of times. Right. It's a one-time flip deal. Right. It's about like hamburgers on the grill. If you're flipping them over and over and over, you're breaking them up. So we need to give that another minute. How's your stuff? Does it need to come out? Mm, nope. Last time I checked, we were still good. So I'm going to turn the heat up on this just a little bit. All right. Now, what I can do, though, because you'll probably make more of those. Okay. Yeah. And I do need a plate to drain these on. For television's sake. So I went ahead and I made my uh, pasta. And then I'm just going to add a little bit. Of, this is like super easy. And I mean, by no means am I the first person to ever do this. But we're going to take some garlic. I smashed mine. Mm -hmm. I smashed mine earlier too. You did. You used the press. You're rubbing off on me. Uh huh. Mmm, those smell good. Oh, really All right, so I'm just gonna kind of rough chop this garlic. Come back through. Doesn't have to be exact. Just get it done. Chunked up garlic here. I'm going to go back over to my pasta pan. Got about three tablespoons of butter. It's butter gets so soft in the summer so fast. I'm going to put this on just like a medium to medium low heat. I'm not really looking to cook per se. I'm looking to melt that butter. Where'd my parmesan go? We were using a lot of the same stuff. Weren't yeah, we? it was. Right here. Okay. I kept it right here for you. Thank you, honey. You're welcome. So I'm going to take my garlic. And my butter's not even fully melted yet. I just want to kind of incorporate that. We're not really looking to cook that garlic. We're looking more just to kind of heat everything up and make it happy. Let that butter cook. And then we'll add our pasta back in. Let that butter melt is what I'm trying to say. I know y'all can't see down in here, so. I'm bringing it over there in just one second. I was checking my, my fritters. Here I come. So, like I said, we're just looking, we're looking to kind of melt that butter. Kind of. You can smell the garlic. That's all you need. Have my pasta draining. I'm just gonna come put that back in. Okay. I'm gonna salt my pasta. About a teaspoon of salt. A little bit of pepper. Okay. Probably about fourth of a cup. Woo! That was more than a fourth of a cup. Wow, we just added the Parmesan en masse. We're just going to give that a stir. With the butter and the garlic. With the butter and the garlic and the salt and the pepper and the Parmesan. Alright, that's all it is. We're going to just okay, turn the heat back on. Let's take a look off. in the oven while we're here. Alright. Let's we'll see what those are looking like, okay? And then our tomatoes are up there on the top. Boy, those look good. Alright, so your tomatoes... These are done. You can see where they're starting to they're starting to crack. The skins are cracking. Yep. You see that? Yep. Okay, if you want the fun of the bursting tomato, pull them now. Those are Whoa. finished. Yep. Look at how delicious that fish looks. Okay. So looking at fish, you're just kind of trying to pull on it a little bit. Yep. See, see how it's cracking. pulling? It's done. Oh yeah, see oh, yeah. that? That's done. 
totally okay. done. Don't want to overcook it. It'll turn to rubber. Okay. All right. We're Hold over this, here. and I think we're going to try and flip these bad boys. Whoa. It's not going to be easy. Where am I going? Wherever you can see that good. Okay. All right. So, these are starting to get brown on the bottom. I'm going to use my bigger spatula, but I'm going to use a smaller one to hold them in place while I get them onto there. Now the key is just flip. These are going to fall apart a little bit on you because there's enough cheese and there's enough liquid on the inside of them. Don't worry about that. Flip it. They're not going to be pretty, but they're going to be delicious. Push them back down in there. All they need is about that same amount on the other side and they're going to be done. This one kind of came apart, so I'm going to flip the other end of it. If you have a lot of patience and you're willing to sit here <laughs> for a long period of time, they'll get solid enough that you can just take them and flip them right over. The other thing is, too, if you're making these fritters and you're saying, nah, this sucks, these things won't hold together at all. Take your yellow squash, zucchini, and onion, whatever you put in that, and put that in the strainer and leave it in the strainer. Yeah, that's if a good you point. If you leave it in there and you drain off that excess liquid, it's going to be a whole lot drier, and drier holds these together a little bit. Better. The other thing I've done before is just go through and cut the centers of the zucchini out. Yeah. Because they just hold a lot of moisture, like yeah. where the seeds are. Where the seeds and stuff. And keep like a good solid chunk of the flesh with the skin. And then mm -hmm. that will cut down on cut down on the uh, liquid mm -hmm. as well. I'm going to take that up there. Right okay. Um, we need a plate, right? Yeah. This will look best on probably a... Um, darker color plate. We always try to make it as good as possible where people can see it good. Okay. It'll be done up in just a minute. I'm going to go ahead. Man, they're going to be fresh. Oh yeah, they smell delicious. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and put some pasta. Good keeping them out of pasta. You want me to bring it over there? Yep. Some tomatoes just right on top. They're going to kind of create your sauce. It's not quite done, but I'm going to go ahead and scoop one of these so we can plate it. We can try. I don't want to drain it slightly. So I'm going to put it. I'm going to go ahead and get two of these. You're going to take your sauce. Okay, go ahead. And just kind of drizzle down over the top. Ooh, ooh, ooh. you got room on there for a zucchini fritter? Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> right about in there. All right, so I got these fritters here. You want it right over here on this side? Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, I almost forgot, too. Oh, man, that stinks. What I got here is I got the salt shooter. <laughs> this is called the bug of salt. And what this is for, the bug of salt, this is for shooting bugs, flies, anything gives you any trouble. I was going to use it today to, to salt our food. So these zucchini fritters do a little more. Oh my god. So, that's about right amount of salt. Right there. Keep one of these bad boys handy. Oh, you got a fritter on there yet. Give me a second. I'm shooting salt. <laughs> I had that in the kitchen just in case I was assaulting bugs, but then I was going to use it. So, here's our fritter. Okay. Sitting on there. You, you didn't leave me a lot of room. You made this beautiful plate without leaving me a lot of room. See? Sorry, honey. Sorry. I'm going to put another one on there, too. They're not all that visually stunning right now, but they're going to be delicious. So, I'm going to put those on there. There's the other part of it. That's not all that visually stunning, either. And then... We come in here, a little of our sauce, just a little of our dipping sauce, and we put it over the top, like so. Okay, let's bring this plate over here so I can get a better, just okay. the plate. Now, how are you going to, what do you just smash your tomatoes down, or what do you do? No, honey, you, you just, eat? you just get yourself going you just there. You're going to hold it? Mm-hmm. Go 
That's probably going to be molten lava, wouldn't you think? Oh, yeah. Get a little of the pasta with it. So it says fresh cherry tomatoes. A way to use all those tomatoes that are in your garden. Dude, that's outstanding. It is really good, isn't it? It's you so simple. The fish with the salt. Striper from Lake Cumberland. Mm. Incredible. Got something on my shirt. Last but not least, the zucchini fritter from your garden. Mm. Excellent. We'll be here next week with some more tips from stuff from your garden. Search behind the camera. Put your, put your hand in front of the camera. Peace <laughs> out. Hope you enjoyed it. Get those gardens rolling. Now you got stuff to do with it. All right.